Alright hey guys, what's up? My name is John Bechtold and uh, today I'm going to talk about kind of like my process in getting all my film gear and uh, what steps I took to acquire the amount of gear that I have today. Uh, obviously film gear is really expensive and it's hard for younger people with uh, you know, minimum wage jobs to pay for, but with time you can build up a pretty solid gear arsenal. Alright, so first of all I'll start out like I've been filmmaking and uh, just making videos in general since I was about 12 years old. When I was 12 I got a uh, Kodak Easy Share for Christmas. It was just like a little point and shoot camera, uh, all auto settings, but uh, I asked for it for Christmas because I thought it was sick that I could shoot uh, 1080 footage and uh, 720 to 60 frames. So. I wanted to make a bunch of cool like BMX videos with my friends and I. At that time, YouTube wasn't like a super big platform. Uh, it was definitely growing, but um, I would just edit my videos in Windows Movie Maker and uh, upload them to actually Facebook. I, I didn't even use YouTube at the time. So the footage wasn't super good, honestly. Uh, I was expecting a lot better. You know, young kid, you think that 1080 resolution is going to be like cinema quality stuff, but um, it wasn't, and I uh, wasn't super satisfied with it, and I wanted to make a better looking image. So around this time, uh, my friend Zach was also super into video and photo, and he'd just gotten a T3i, like a DSLR camera that's actually pretty good for filmmaking. He learned a bunch of stuff from this book that he had, it was like an intro to photo book, I don't even remember what it was called, but he gave me this book and I read a, read a bunch about photo and uh, how cameras work and imaging in general. You know, how to expose an image, like what sensor size is, what sensor size means, what ISO is, um, and how all of these affect your image and what your image looks like. I uh, also read up on like color science and decided that I would really try to up my imaging game. And uh, that summer I worked on a farm and saved up, I think it was, it was about like $400. Um, I bought a refurbished Nikon D5100. The camera was super, super weird. For some reason you could shoot all manual and photo, but it wouldn't transfer over to video. So I had to do this weird thing where I would try to just point the camera in different spots and get different exposures and then hit the exposure lock when it just randomly had the right shutter speed, aperture, and ISO that I wanted. Uh, super weird that I could only shoot auto and not manual, they, that didn't make any sense to me. It was an awesome camera and I had a lot of fun taking pictures with it, uh, but really it was not a filmmaking camera. And I mean, just down to the, you can't choose your own exposure alone, like you can't use that as a professional video camera. So um, about a year later, maybe a little less, I decided that I wanted to, again, kind of just up my game and up my gear. And I sold that for, since I bought it refurbished, uh, which I highly recommend all of you do, um, refurbished has been sent back to the factory, but it ends up being like triple checked more than like the cameras that come out of the factory get checked. Uh, so yeah, it was broken at one point, but it's definitely not broken anymore. Especially if you're trying to save money and buying maybe a uh, past generation's gear, it definitely makes sense to just buy a refurbished. You'll save a ton of money and uh, you'll be able to resell it for way closer to what you bought it for when you do decide to upgrade, which is what I did. Um, I ended up selling my Nikon D5100 for $375 and I paid only like $400 for it. It's pretty sweet. I made out really well on that deal. And uh, with that money, I bought a uh, fisheye and a kit lens and a Panasonic GH2. Uh, Micro Four Thirds sensor, slightly smaller than the APS-C that was on the D5100. Pretty good quality. As long as it was lit well, uh, didn't do very well in low light, but definitely a step up from the Nikon D5100 just because it could have manual settings and video. Um, and at this point, like, I was kind of growing a lens collection. I let my friend borrow it, and uh, he gave me a lens in return. Uh, he used it for like a wedding shoot, a uh, bunch of little stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, the guy that I bought the camera from, Dan Collar, uh, who's not like a pro BMX rider, ended up giving me the rest of his DSLR gear, like an easy handle and uh, viewfinder and a couple other things. He bundled all that together for not too much more expensive. I think there's like a, uh, a stereo video mic in there too, stereo video mic pro. So yeah, I got like a pretty decent little filmmaking bundle and at that point I was able to start making videos kind of down a professional level. I was about 16 at this time. So I made a bunch of BMX videos, general practice with filmmaking, like when to make different cuts and like how to make things flow s smoothly and uh, how to use editing software, how to do a little bit of basic coloring, uh, what to do with audio, just you know basic general filmmaking practice in the beginning. So I learned a lot from making BMX videos and built like a small portfolio up and I ended up getting my first 
uh, actual video job, which paid a lot more than working minimum wage at the skate park where I was working at the time to buy all my camera gear. I made a few videos for a couple different manufacturing companies and was able to actually afford a Panasonic GH4 what, like right when that came out. It was a pretty big step for me. Like at this point I could do 4K footage, 1080, 96, I could start doing really cinematic, nice slow-mo. My video, my imaging quality was like going through the roof compared to how it used to be. Yeah, now that I uh, have been making videos with that, I've been getting work at a bunch of different companies, uh, manufacturing companies and different ad jobs. And I've built up like pretty solid gear arsenal, which uh, I can get into in a later video, like exactly what I have in my bag. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments below. But recently I've been working with a media production company uh, called Yuko Media. We actually rent a bunch of gear from Gearhead, like uh, C300s and other like cinema quality cameras that I can't really afford right now, but since I'm working with these people at Yuko and they rent them out, I get to play with these really, really crazy expensive cameras, which is a pretty big treat for me. And hopefully I'll be able to buy something like that in the future and grow my gear arsenal even further. But basically like the point of this video is if you work hard and save your money and just like keep pursuing the filmmaking thing, really like make it your life, you'll be able to afford the gear. It's just uh, you gotta sacrifice other things like buying the newest video game or whatever, buying the new t-shirt you see at the mall and save your money that you would have spent on that and spend it on video gear uh, and getting as many film photo jobs as you can to justify your new camera purchases and your new gear purchases. There's not a huge secret to buying gear other than you gotta work for it, but it's totally achievable. Uh, I did it, you can definitely do it. If you love filmmaking enough, the process of acquiring gear, although kind of tedious and uh, it's a long process, is really, really fun. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, be stoked if you'd like, leave a comment below. And if you wanna see more like it, be sweet if you subscribe. All right, later.